Hey guys, this is Gaijin Hunter, and welcome back to my next episode on my Let's Play for Soul Sacrifice Delta. We have already done a bunch already, and we are now going to go into the next chapter of our story with Magusar, which is called Fading Humanity. As you see here, this has a star rating of 5, uh, so it'll be a little bit more difficult, but we are at around 5 or 6 right now, so I think it'll be pretty easy going. Town was painted red. Skulls, bodies, and all manner of innards strewn about. It was all my doing. A rampage, total loss of control. My right arm was still fresh. eviscerated entrails. I had little room for denial. The clock on my humanity is winding down. I stood in the ruins with the dank stench of death, reflecting upon the gravity of my sins. Okay, that was a rather dark opening to the chapter. Let's go kill some spiders, <laughs> shall we? My arm has robbed the town of all its inhabitants. No one was left alive. The bloodlust overwhelmed me, drove me to it. The old writings. They say the world was nearly destroyed once. Some claim that chalice has been used to recreate the world several times. Areas of effect. Standing in certain areas can energize one's body. I think so. This is funny that they're showing it here, but this is just a. Um, there are certain circles of around the arena that are bursting with energy, and so everything you do inside those circles makes it go faster. So you run through them faster, you cast spells faster, you heal faster. They're just really great. It almost reminds me of like those speed zones in like F Zero, something like that. It's a morbid stage design if I've ever seen one. One of the spiders trying to avenge all the people that I murdered. Oh. It seems all the residents have been consigned to oblivion. Yeah, I think I lost it. Magusar's probably gonna have to put me down soon. I do like the automatic doors. It's very nice. Hospitable. Kinda hope it wasn't actually me, but it was just like a mistaken vision. Would be nice. We'll find out though. I'm bounded. You sacrifice them. I think he just told me to sacrifice and not save them, but I completely ignored everything he said because I'm running a sanctuary build. Maybe that's why he, I'm going insane. Yeah, I'm gonna switch to an actual healing spell um, after this hunt. Packed, I'm sorry. Can't believe I'm still using a bronze spear. It just shows you like how good 
that spear is. There is a pact where I can go and get a silver version of this from the Red Riding Hood. Or Cerberus or whoever it was. I think it was Red Riding Hood. I just haven't done it yet. Because I think we'll hit the gold version before we even need to worry about getting the silver one. Plus, the faster we get into the end game, the more fun we're going to have because you can really go crazy and try out all sorts of builds once we get there. Should probably sacrifice some of them so I can get some of their essences. Horrible EXP though. Okay, let's find out what the heck just happened, huh? Just sucks because I really like the author. He's a he's a really good guy. Then an image of my mother flashed into my mind. Why now? This was not usual. There must be some reason that I would remember her at this moment. To find an answer, I had to untangle a complex web formed by the strings of fate. Only later would I realize that it was all fated to happen. From the moment I set foot in that town, I knew that it was the place my mother once lived. For it perfectly matched a story I heard when I was very young. My mother was driven out over some insignificant happenings. A fine spree of death indeed. Magusa spoke with dead calm. Only your victims were not alive in the first place. Five days until the end of the world. Okay, well I guess that means I was probably killing monsters, right? Not actually people, so that's good. I was kind of getting the impression that <laughs> I killed all the residents, but it's it sounds like monsters already attacked the whole town and, you know, half revenge because you knew that the town was bad to your mother and half just doing your job, so. The journal begins to touch somehow upon the author's mother. Why would she suddenly come up now? Read on to discover the most peculiar when we came upon my mother's town, its inhabitants had perished long before. A story my mother told me long ago explained this. The tale matched what she had said. The townspeople were projections. I had massacred apparitions. Eerie phantoms, which were the work of one man. The man loved his fair town. Loved it too much, one might say. When disease struck the town, the man refused to believe it. His desires led him to stray from the path of good. With ghastly newfound powers, he restored the good old days. 
we came for him and started with the destruction of his phantom puppets. We knew that slaughtering his dolls would tease him out. All right, up against the Cerberus. Okay, let's read about Cerberus. There was once a town frequently troubled by bandit raids. Fortunately, it had a formidable guardsman who loved his place of birth. With his two fierce hunting dogs beside him, the guardsman would stand at the town gates, repelling any would-be raiders. The trio became well known for their veracity in battle. His achievements led to offers of more prestigious roles, but the guardsman rejected them all. Nothing could bring him more happiness or pride than protecting his hometown. Little did he know that his happiness was not to last. The town was struck by a terrible disease that spread rapidly, proving fatal to those infected. Scared people left in droves, and as the town emptied, its vitality sapped away. The guardsman could not stand and watch his hometown wither away. He had devoted his life to protecting this town and feared that he had now little reason to live. Those attempting to leave he deemed cowards, and as time went on, his feeling towards them hardened. He would not see them to leave. He could hardly guard a town with no people, after all. Unthinkable as it was once seemed, he turned on his fellow townspeople using fear and brute force to ensure they did not leave the town. Even as the disease continued to spread, the guardsman stuck to his course of action. He was long lost to the depths of insanity. One evening, bandits launched a raid on the town. The guardsman, however, was ready for them. His face twisted with ecstasy. This is what he lived for, after all. As the bandits tried to leave to flee, the guardsman was struck by a spear from a place where no bandit could have been, from behind him, from the town he had devoted his life to protecting. The townspeople had resolved to stand up against the guardman's tyranny and struck him down through from behind. As the guardsman lay there, his consciousness dimming, a strange light lapped at his eyes. A chalice floated before him, bathed in a cool white glow. Make an offering, give me what is most precious to you and your wish shall be granted. Mesmerized by the chalice's words, the guardsman offered his dogs to kill everyone in town, friend and foe alike. He turned on the very people he had spent a lifetime protecting, those he held dearest, now his offering. A giant mound of corpses was amassed. Beside it, the guardsmen stood weeping. The howls of a mad dog echoed, then the area was shrouded in a black glow. From the pools of blood that had gathered, a monster rose, a monster that defiled description. Legend has it that the town still exists somewhere in the world, appearance-wise unchanged in years, and still has still the same during the guardsman heyday. They say he can be found there still, ganding, standing guard the gate. He may let you enter, but he certainly won't let you leave. Dun 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 dun. <laughs> it's an interesting story. I mean, you know, it's you'll see this come up in a lot of different stories that it seems like a pandemic, uh, a plague, a disease like ravaged the world of this of this universe, and the way that people reacted is very crazy. Um, but you know, considering everything I've seen and heard out of people's mouths in the last few years, it doesn't surprise me. If we had sorcery in this world, things would be going really crazy. So it's about time we use some rumors because we're starting to build them up. Uh, we really should be using these. So what do we got? We got bo experience boosters. We've got the... Anything interesting here to use? Like, I don't need to call them the grunts. I'm not worried about the small little monsters. Effect boost P sigil. What does that mean? Okay, so I mean, at least you can um, you can tab into it. So when they were forced to use abbreviations, you could still see the explanation. So boost effectiveness of palm sigil. Well, the palm is a very strong one, and that gives me very high defense. So why don't I put that on? And let's give myself uh, some extra experience as well, even though it's not a whole lot. And I am going to put on an actual healing spell. I know I've been saying that for a while. <laughs> So, let's uh, go over to healing. I need healing. So we have an area heal, which will renew everyone around me, but I can only use it three or four times. 
I've got this. 300 and I can cast it six times. I like that. 400 three times. 510 two times. Mmm, that's a tough one, isn't it? I think I'll take this for now. Yeah, I think we're good. Black Rites back on Infernus. It's good. My allies being Similia and Sympatha. Okay. Let's do this. Well, I mean, yes, in this one I'm with Magusar, though, so I won't be taking them with me. Let's get it on. The people whose blood I split weren't really truly people. And yet the sensation from consigning them to oblivion was not altogether different. Megasar sometimes laments his fate, the guilt he must feel having to sacrifice others in order to go on living. He claims he cannot quiet his body's desire for sacrifice. To age like any other, to die like any other, the life that others take for granted, he craves with every fiber of his being. Yep, everyone says it would be nice to live forever when they're kids, but when you really think about it, you know, one, at what price, and two, do you really want to live forever? It's a deep question, one worth thinking about. I tend to think that it's the knowing that our time is limited is what makes every day special. It seems we've lured out the monster, just as we planned. Good, let's get his spear. He's got a really good thunder spear. And I really want it. Because that this should be a silver one at this point. This would be a very fine weapon to bring with me, so. Let's uh let's buff up. I'm just gonna ignore these guys for now. Probably shouldn't, but whatever. So that's that area. If you uh, go into Mindtai, you can see everything's faster in here. There I am dilly dallying again. Oh well. Only nine experience. But that's so bad. Well, I may as well collect these if Magusar went through all the uh, work to get them. Okay, well, at least we're in uh, level 24 now. Ooh. That's a cool looking monster, isn't it? So what's the big old part? So we've got the two dog heads and his head. Is that it? Oh, that's nothing. They're really high up. And I took off the spell that lets me get high up. <laughs> so we'll use a spear. Spear is an upward facing thing. Maybe it'll hit. Or maybe not. Maybe I'll just completely regret having taken off everything. No, it's, it's hitting. I'm just gonna lock on here, since uh, we're not really aiming for a very small specific zone here. Oof, I really should have that uh, feather back on, so it's the heal spell you can see, it works really nice. Okay, well I guess he, he brings his head forward so much that it works out. Oh, I want to get towards his head. Come on. Ouch. I can't see. I'm not locked down anymore. Come on, give me your head. Oh no, did I... My claws are too strong. Did you see that? I, I got him before we got his head. That stinks. I shouldn't have boosted myself. <laughs> Here I am lamenting over victory. Go figure. But it ran away, so I think we'll get to face it again.
We got a homing spell from him. Huh? <laughs> that doesn't make me happy. I want more. Deeply wounded, the Cerberus fled. Magusar mentioned it as we pursued the beast. I am your partner. Only. Magusar said that he feared me. Alarmed at the violence I exhibited toward these ghosts. Convinced that I would have done the same to real people. Remember, I must take your life before my premonitions come to pass. Nagusa was preparing for the moment of truth. And who could blame him? I could feel what was happening to my body. My humanity was approaching its frail end. We pursued the monster, but it was a trap. We soon faced a woman who claimed to be Magusar's former partner. Five days until the end of the world. The author of the journal is now almost a monster. And the relationship with Magusar is transforming. According to the sorcerer's recollection, it was Ilicebra. She was beaming. But I still could not get over her striking likeness to Sortiara. I knew something was stirring in these parts. <laughs> For Ilicebra, this was reason enough to follow Magusa. I was shocked to hear what she proceeded to tell us. Ilicebra said that she once lived in this town. The description made my heart race. It perfectly matched what my own mother had once told me. It occurred to me that I had never been able to remember my mother's face. It was imperative that I reconsider just who this inner zebra might be. Until then, she was only the woman who claimed to be Magusar's former partner. But that seemed less likely. She is something else. Ooh. This is going to get interesting fast, huh? So let's go up against Ilicebra. Now, if you remember, there was a sigil I was going after that required a life essence from her. I don't know if they'll let me save her, though, because it does say kill Ilicebra. Might actually have to go back and do it. Um, I don't know, but I'm going to try. We'll see what happens. Let me change my armage. Uh, the mole is great for breaking parts, but it's horrible. It makes you very slow. So let me go over to choose feathers again, actually. What do we get if we boost these? So we have one that lasts for seven casts and only 60 seconds. Or 17 casts and 40 seconds. I think I'll take this one. Yeah, I think I'm good. Here we go. My mother's story is exactly the same as what Ilocebra tells about her past. Meaning, the chalice will only fulfill your desires for a suitable price. Not all desires will be fulfilled. Not sure why the chalice thing came in there. Maybe it was just random. I don't know. It's 
MILF time. She keeps saying that we used to be partners. I hope you don't mind if I join you. <laughs> oh, I don't mind. We're cornering the wall. Seems so good. You see, this town was once my hope. I'm gonna let her talk a little. I wanna hear what she has to say. Even attacking me? Is she only attacking him. Nope. <laughs> so much for that theory, huh? Oh, you messed with the wrong one. You'll come to regret that. And there goes my armor. Oh, and she disappeared again. So much for my life essence. <laughs> More like legendary failure. Legendary sorcerer. Okay, well, let's see where this brings us. I am intrigued. I am assuming you are as well. Before the epidemic wiped out the town. Ilicebra had lived here, but the townsfolk feared her magic and banished her. Not long after Ilicebra left, the town was struck by the epidemic. This is no mere coincidence. Her story is a perfect match the one I heard from my mother in my youth. Still, I could not recall my mother's face. The vagueness of my memory was unnerving. A dreadful thought crossed my mind. I heard a monster howl in the distance. Elisiba grinned and walked away. Could this witch be my mother? I knew I had to ask, but she was gone before I had the chance. Five days until the end of the world. Elisibra, who strongly resembles Sortiara, spoke of the same things as his mother. Could it be that Elisibra is the sorcerer's mother? His writing clearly demonstrates his confusion. We once again faced the Cerberus. Magusa spoke. He told me that the monster resented me. Yes, he most certainly does. 
for I had dissipated his great cast of characters, his entire town of phantom inhabitants. Magusa said something odd. I wish to absorb the hatred harbored by this Cerberus. But what use did Magusa have for hatred? To ease the pain. Make it possible to take your life. The Cerberus stewed in anger at me. By absorbing the dog in sacrifice, Magusa could inherit that seething ire. Magusa was thinking ahead, preparing his emotions. Perhaps the memory of our next victim will contain a hint about the chalice. I return to the fray on a sliver of hope. Okay, it's time to have the final showdown with the Cerberus. It's awful sad that Magusar cares about us so much that it's killing him to think that he has to get rid of us once we turn into a monster. The mere thought of damage to our partnership was unbearable, and strangely, I had the distant feeling that this was not the first time that Magusar and I had parted. I had made a great many sacrifices, between my own memories and my victims, I could no longer safely distinguish. Was it truly I who authored this journal? Man, they are planting seeds! You know what I'm saying? Luckily, this game pays off in every single regard, so if you watch the series to the very end, you'll have a complete picture. Like, it's very satisfying. If we don't find the chalice, I shall have to kill you. Then we'll shall have to find the chalice, won't the beast we? Must be put to death. Our okay, so we got another random person to help us out here. Let's go ahead and save them. Remtor. Just happened to be in the wrong place, wrong time, I guess. This is such a huge arena. Where is Cerberus? There it is. So I'm just going to go at it with blood because I know now that it will actually reach um, its head for some reason. It's got big big reach. I'm just going to have a slash fest. Cat fight. But with dogs and sorcerers. Ouch. Let's heal up. So he used the shield, which knocked it down, which is great. It's one of the things I really like about shields. Is he going to pull out the... Oh, not yet. Oh, I'm too far away. There goes the other head. I gotta heal. I gotta keep remembering that the uh, the blood spells do take up my life. Oh, he's pulling it out. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that sword. Give it to me. Give me your head. I'm gonna wait for him to hit that shield again and go down so I can hit his face. I don't want to do too much damage to him that's not against the head. So I really, really want to get that spear. Yeah, and he's yellow already, so we gotta be careful. Come on, Remtor. Oh, Magusar's got the shield. Okay, over here. Come on, charge us. Shield. Magusar used the shield. Oh, they're going to kill him? No, I can't allow that. Stay 
Yeah, I'm not reaching the head here, so I'm helping me out. So I'm so used to bringing a platform with me that I'm not used to trying to hit this high up. No, don't hit his butt. That's not going to help anybody. I need somebody to hit him with a shield. Come on. I need him down. Okay, you know what? I'm going to whip out my lance. Maybe that'll work. Spear. Oh, I can climb up here, can't I? Can I? No, I can't. Uh, what do I do? I can't get up there. If I have to, I'll just redo this hunt. Um, and I'll bring the... Oh, there we go. He got the down. He got the down. And I was locked onto a stupid mouse. This is my healing seed. Those wounds of yours need to be treated. You're not dying here. Man. Come on. Hit Remtor. Hit his shield. Go down. I'm gonna. Oh, here we go. Somebody heal me. Thank you. Actually, you know what I can probably do here? Support spell. This might actually hit his head. Let me find where he is. Wait for him to go down. I'm going to jump at him. <laughs> I have no idea if that hit the head or not. <laughs> Couldn't tell. Oh, I got his butt. Come on. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go all out. I have very little health, but I'm going to wait till he gets down one more time, and I'm going to use my blood spell. I need his face, though. Oh, pfft. Come on. Buddy, doggy. I'll get you again. Don't you worry. So what to do? Magasar wants him so he can inherit the hate to make it easier to kill me. Uh, you know what? I'll agree with him this once. I'll, Magasar wants it. I'll give it to him. You don't have to, though. You have a choice. What the heck are you looking at? Rat. Oh, we were so close to getting to the other part break. It's a little tricky. If I brought the platform, this would have been very easy. Might actually do that. Once we're done with this story, though. Okay, well, we unlocked a bunch of uh, other stuff. So we got the beginning of the end, which I think is the next main Magusar story. We got Night of Vengeance and Ballad of a Werewolf, uh, which are sanctioned, uh, focused, uh, character-focused ones. And we unlocked a whole bunch of sigils, which is good.
we had found no new clues about the sacred chalice. And as for me, I was just another step closer. A step closer towards destroying the world. You are the only one that I am truly honest with. But even so, at first I was determined to not hesitate to kill you. I knew what this meant. How painful it must have been for Magusa to admit these feelings. Why proclaim that you won't hesitate? Unless you are afraid that you will. Emotions are not something easily set aside. He must, after all, take a life with his own hands. The life of a friend who has given him more time than his own family. I am sure. Only guilt awaits one at the end of that route. I was deeply tormented by what I had done to Sotiara. I had walked over her corpse and now was haunted by her visage. The thought of death made me think of separation. Could I handle this? Could Magusa? Perhaps our friendship could be forgotten, but our time spent together could not. By now, we accommodated one another effortlessly. We were, after all, human, despite the great prices paid. Five days until the end of the world. You've read a good way through. Perhaps one day I can divulge the truth to you. The truth contained in this journal. Yes, you may. So let's quick check out the ones we unlocked. So it was Avalon. Uh, both of them Avalon. Okay, Ballad of a Werewolf, which is a five-star difficulty. Venatar's Story. And Night of Vengeance, which is Militar's Story. They're both uh, same difficulty rating. Centurium, we're still where we're at, and nothing new for Grim. And then we have the beginning of the end, which is also five star. I'm probably just going to go into that before we go to the sorceress deeds, only because I don't know. This story is so um, tantalizing. I don't know where to start. How many chapters does this have? Oh, this has six. It's going to be a long one. Maybe not. Uh, werewolf is good because that's how I'm going to get the next blood spell, which I really want. And that's only four chapters. Yeah, let's do Venatar's story um, on top of what we're doing today to make a nice big video. Let me go back into Fading Humanity, though. I really want to get that uh, that final break. So, in order to get the break, what we're going to do is buff ourselves, use the claws. I guess I can keep the spear on. Hmm. I need the healing. Let me get rid of the spear for now, actually. And swap that out for the platform. I think that'll be enough. Okay, do we have anything to help us break parts, perhaps? No, I didn't think so. Okay, let's quickly go in and see if I can uh, get all the breaks so we can uh, 
get that spear. I think we will. I think this will go by very fast. I hope so because it'll help demonstrate how much a strategy can really make a difference in this game. If we don't find the chance, I shall have to kill. Our survival. Charge him. Nice. Those wounds of yours need to be treated. <laughs> How do you like that? Okay, I better heal. <laughs> That orange. Let's finish him off in style as well. I'm going to use a black right just because it's been a while since we've done that. Is he red? No. It's not red, so we won't use it quite yet. Let's do this. Oops. Oh, he's down, he's down, he's down, he's down. Do it. For the revolution! Yeah! So if you're Avalon, this does 2,500 attack. And if you are any other one, it does 2,000. But because I am Sanctuarium, I believe... No, 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 I'm getting myself confused. It's 2,000 damage for this one. That's one dead Cerberus. Now let's go save him. We can use the life essence. Let us finish this. Please save my life. See how good a strategy can go. Also, how well those behemoth uh, apples are. <laughs> what are you doing? This is a video game, my friend. I need to get the sigils. Do you not understand? Break the fourth wall. See the truth. <laughs> he would never understand. If we don't get legend on, legendary on that, I'll be very disappointed. There we go. Gimme, 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 gimme. There it is, the unbroken spear. 55 volt and seven casts. Waken the magic of the Cerberus to conjure a spear for impaling foes. Yes, and we also even uh, got another thing, which is good. That was great. I like that. That went really well. But without sacrificing, I could gain no memories. And therefore no leads on the sacred chalice. And as for me, I was just another step closer. A step closer towards destroying the world. You are the only one, but Yeah, so we can see the difference here. Of the story. Good stuff. Uh, if you remember before, I was telling you that I was going to do some dubious things. Uh, just because I don't want to grind like crazy on this one. Because, one, I don't think it would be that interesting to see. And two, uh, I want to get through the story and share it with you guys. Because this is not my main save. My main save is actually from another game. Uh, so let me... Do something cheesy here. A quick 
Replica. Put on that new spear. Where is it? There we go. Let me quick uh, save that. Okay, and we're all good. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this chapter of Soul Sacrifice Delta. I know I certainly did and can't wait to see where the story goes. Hope you guys had fun. Until next time, happy hunting.